And it's not always those on the outside because people with personality disorders, mental illness, some of them who refuse to admit that they do, they'll say that it's your family. Your family is the problem. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's the children, you know. Maybe you need money. Maybe you need a different job. Maybe you need to just, you know, move somewhere else. But maybe, just maybe it is the, the one who is having all sorts of stuff going on with him or her. Pride, anger, demonic suppression, oppression. And deliverance ministries aren't popular. But some individuals need deliverance like those many individuals that Jesus had to cast demons out of. Oh, there's demonic spirits that exist. There's some Christians who believe that they're Christians when in fact they're really not because here's a here's a, a good clue. Somebody who you're dating or somebody who you're in a relationship with, here's a good clue that they're not really a Christian. When they have problems with people who are Christians, when they badmouth all the Christians. And anything that deals with the Bible, they turn their nose up. Anything that deals with prayer or spiritual things, they are always coming up with some type of excuse or some criticism. You see, Satan don't like people who are believers, people who acknowledge that there is, in fact, a creator. He can't stand people like that. He can't stand righteous living you know some people are definitely not believers when you're having a great time enjoying the the people of the lord possibly your family what have you and this individual the only thing that tends to come out their mouth is negativity 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 they're always looking for faults in people you see you can't tell me that you're a believer when every time I turn around you're always flipping out or having some type of dispute or claiming that you're about God's business but yet you're bad mouthing Christians we all have our flaws okay and sometimes we need to talk about those but when you find a person that that's just all they you know talk about it seems is what this one did and how bad they are and Ah, that's why I can't get with this one and that one. And there's just no love. They can't even say, I love you. Because you know God is love. So, so for some people, if they have a problem with that, there's some purging that needs to take place. You see. Because we all, all of us, before we started walking with the Lord, there was some purging that had to take place. There was some demonic spirits that had to come out there was some of us i know i'm one who was on the floor okay with stuff around my mouth and yelling and crying and screaming and hearing all sorts of stuff that i know was not of the lord but i needed deliverance because i was carrying all sorts of stuff stuff that i didn't even know about through generational curses. Things that a mother who's carrying a child within her womb and the burdens that she was going through being placed on a baby. And a baby's not, like, why am I coming into this world wanting to fight? Why am I coming into this world not liking certain people and never met them before or don't really know them? Children can pick up on things. Babies can pick up on things from their parents long before they start walking this earth. Lord Jesus. That's why if you are one who is pregnant and you're in a partnership or you're married or what have you, you've got to be careful who you're associating yourself with. You've got to watch what you're putting before your eyes during this pregnancy and taking captive of any negative thoughts because you don't want your baby coming into this world with all sorts of stuff. Some people can remember as far back as two years old 
when parents were rejecting them, when siblings did things to hurt them, when babysitters and other caretakers were up to no good with them because of their demonic spirits. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, laboring to love myself. So after all of this stuff that you've been through in relationships, unresolved issues from the past, there comes a place, a point I should say in your life where you say, I want to come up higher. If love is an issue for you, then you know you've got to do what you need to do. And sometimes it means reflecting, looking at every decision that you've made that caused you to come to a point right now where you don't like nothing, not the people around you, but yet you're using certain people for happiness. You don't like the job, the church, what have you. It's time to reflect. It's time to say, okay, what got me to this place? Now you got the answer to that question. Okay. Sometimes you got to pin these things down. You got to pin them down. Going back into relationships. Once some individuals break up, there comes a point where you want to go back. You're hoping. If you're not going back, you're hoping he comes back or she comes back. Part of laboring to love yourself is wanting to know what is it about this person that you just got to keep bringing them back into your life, even though they're no good for you. In this particular poem, on page 57 of Laboring to Love Myself, is titled, When He Returns. Obsessed, that's the first mistake, obsessed with this man, every day thought of him, couldn't eat sleep or drink without him on my mind. 10 long years, opportunities came and went for us to build a life together. But I always found ways to mess it up. Notice, taking on the blame, taking on the blame, missing someone and then taking on the blame as to why everything got messed up. It takes two, people. It takes two. But I always found ways to mess it up. Things had to be complicated for me. Asking questions, always wanting to be sure. Taking things out of context. Obsessed with his thoughts. Does he love me? Does he care about me? Am I always on his mind? Couldn't leave well enough alone. Got bored too easily. Hated routine. Wanted him to change. Because I had changed. He wasn't moving fast enough for me. Found faults with him. Obstacles. Saw a new man that caught my eye. Distraction. He was better than him. Old man had enough of the emotional merry-go-round. He wanted off the ride while I held on. He jumped off. I wanted him back. He wasn't hearing of it. Didn't want to hurt my feelings. He held my hand. Then let go. Slowly. Until there was no more us. I say, you may have been in a relationship where you were given ample opportunity to commit. But for whatever reason, you just couldn't at the time. Then when you are finally ready, the person doesn't want you anymore. Wild emotions begin to surface like jealousy, anger, and resentment. God reminded me back in 1997 that love is free. Leave jealousy alone. She is not your friend. When we allow jealousy to surface, we put ourselves at risk of being cut off, cut out, or cut away from people, opportunities, and things. What have you been cut from lately due to jealousy, angry emotions, and etc. What have you been cut off? Or have you cut yourself off? And if you cut yourself off, was that cut a good one? Was it the righteous one? Like I said, if the temple of the Holy Spirit is being violated in some way, then that was a good cut. 
If you cut someone off because they were speaking knowledge, wisdom, truth to you, trying to give you a sense of direction, and you kept rejecting that, then that wasn't a good cut. It wasn't a good cut. Moving on to the next one wasn't the best thing. Because, see, what happens is, is that when we do move on to the next one, if we made a bad cut, if you will, then we find out that we've got a similar relationship to the one that we could have made it with, you see. But if you made a good cut, then you know you have no regrets. You have no regrets. You are so happy to have moved on. But some people will find faults with individuals where there really is no fault. Or they'll make up stories or they'll tell lies. Not everybody that comes into our life is a bad person or is up to something. But if we or the culprit, if you will, if we're the ones that's coming into people's lives and doing things that we have no business, well, we as believers are going to have to be accountable to God. And you know that God's butt whippings aren't the type of whippings that you want to uh, experience. But some people, that's why they're going through like they're going through. And sometimes, unfortunately, I must say this, but sometimes it literally takes a butt whipping from another human being for some people to come to God. Part of my testimony in walking this walk is I had to literally go through physical abuse to really take God at his word. And some people say, that's crazy. A loving God will, will allow such things. Consider the thorn in the flesh that Paul had. Oh, it keeps you humble. When you know that there is a God that could possibly put you in a position where you learn some serious lessons in life and not in the way that other people learn them in an easy way, so to speak. Oh, you're going to straighten up. You're going to straighten up. And then when you read scripture about a righteous man a righteous man experiencing all sorts of hardship because Satan wanted to challenge him. I'm talking about Job. It makes you think twice. So don't play with God. If you pray to him, you're getting him involved in your relationship. And if you're getting him involved in your relationship, you got to follow the precepts. And if you're not willing to follow the precepts, it's going to be dark days. It's going to be dark days for you. I'm a witness to that. There are days where you don't know whether you're coming or going because you played with God. So I thank you so much for listening. For those of you all who are out in California who are going through all sorts of domestic violence, let me direct you to Shepherd's Door Domestic Violence Resource Center. They do have a email. It's S as in Sam, D as in dog at shepherddoor2001.org. You can go to their website, which is www.shepherddoor.org. They are also on Facebook, and that would be Shepherds in capital D for door. And you'll be able to get the necessary information to help you. Uh, through whatever you're going through in this uh, challenging relationship. They have community support groups, emergency temporary shelter, crisis counseling. You can also learn about restraining orders. There are empowerment classes, community presentations, case management, youth violence prevention education, relationship education, financial empowerment, transportation and referrals for other services. Everything that an enemy in a relationship tried to tamper with to keep you from getting out of that relationship, these folks over at Shepherd's Door Domestic Violence Resource Center will help you get out of a crazy relationship. So I thank you so much for taking the time out to listen to God be the glory.